Harshis Vayati focuses on the passing away of the righteous. A major part of its content is about how Yaakov, our patriarch, passed away. It also describes the death of Joseph and its Haftorah is about the death of King David. The subject of death is important to the book of Bereshis. Adam, the first man, was created to be immortal. He is warned by the Holy One, blessed be he, that if he eats from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he will die a death. He transgresses on the mitzvah, and after 930 years, passes away. After Sarah, our matriarch, passes away, the Chumash describes Abraham as old, advanced in years. It is at this point that he decides to marry off his son Yitzchak. Abraham then remarries, has a number of children, sends them away with gifts, then expires. When Yitzchak, our father, is old, with failing eyesight, he becomes concerned about passing away and decides to bless a son to be his designated successor. He lives at least another 22 years, then passes away. The first inkling of the death of Jacob is when he appoints Yosef to supervise his other sons in their shepherding of the flock. This is after the birth of Benjamin, who was called a son of his old age. This is a change from before, when Yaakov would shepherd the sheep himself. Once in Egypt, the Chumash states, the time approached for Israel to die. The Ramban comments that this occurred in the last year of Jacob's life, and that he called for Yosef because he himself felt that his abilities were diminishing and that the weakness was intensifying. He in fact was not sick, but he knew that there were not a large number of days remaining. It is at this point that he calls Yosef and makes him promise to bury him in the family crypt in Machpelah Cave in the land of Canaan. Sometime after this, it is reported to Yosef that his father is ill. Yosef immediately goes to Yaakov and takes his two sons with him to receive a blessing. Yaakov knows that his descendants will form into a nation, so he gives them a special blessing and institutes it as the blessing that parents of the nation are to give their children. He also knows that each of his sons is going to be the father of a tribe in that nation. However, he declares the two sons of Yosef to be tribes, thereby giving Yosef an additional portion above his brothers. With the end imminent, Jacob summons his twelve sons to his bedside to hear his final words. For some of them it is a rebuke, for others it is a pleasing observation of what they are or what they will be. The Torah reckons them all as the blessing that is appropriate for each of them. He then repeats his wish to be buried in the family tomb in Hebron, and with that he perishes. The Chumash continues briefly recounting the good experiences of Yosef's old age. On his deathbed, Yosef summons his brothers to assure them that God will surely bring their nation into the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and tells them that they are to rebury him there. In the Haftorah, the time approached for King David to die. He is on his deathbed, but when his clothes no longer kept him warm, it was known that the end was coming. David calls his son Solomon to his side 
and exhorts him to keep the Torah of Moshe with a full heart. He assures him that this will bring him success and ensure that his descendants will rule after him. He also tells him to punish certain people who had greatly offended him and to be kind to specific people who had been kind to him when he was in need. The Talmud, the Sakta Shabbos, brings a quote from Ecclesiastics on the day that the keeper of the house will tremble and the strong men will bow themselves. It explains that the keepers of the house are the flanks and the ribs. The mighty men bowing are the thighs. The grinders that cease are the teeth. And those that look out the windows are darkened are the eyes. It then relates an anecdote that the Kaiser asked Rabbi Yahushua ben Kanina why he did not go out to debate with the Sadducees. He replied that the mountain is snowy and is surrounded by ice, meaning he has gray hair and a gray beard. The dog does not bark, meaning that his voice is not heard. The grinders, meaning the teeth, do not grind. The school of Rav was one to say, what I did not lose, I seek. The Talmud in Baba Metziah discusses old age and explains that until Abraham, there was no old age. He ran into a problem because people were always confusing him with his son Yitzchak. Therefore, Abraham davened that he should look old. Until Jacob came, there was not illness. Therefore, he prayed that he should be stricken with illness. The Sansino Gemara explains that until this time, one lived his allotted years in good health, then, then died suddenly. Rashi explains that Yaakov wanted that a man should be sick before his death, in order that he should be able to express his final will to his household. The Code of Jewish Law writes that it is commendable to be with a person at the last moment so that the soul should not be bewildered when leaving the body. People there should not engage in idle chatter, rather they should talk about things of substance it is also appropriate to say psalms and prayers. It is also customary to light candles. The point seems to be that the recognition of our limited time in this world comes gradually, and it is an act of kindness. At first, it's almost an abstract that will happen someday, perhaps after a thousand years. Next one sees that what is generally considered the long term is longer than they expect to live. At that point, one appoints a successor and it does the things perhaps only he can do. After that, perhaps because of failing health, one sees the end of the road of life's journey and it becomes appropriate to talk about burial and final arrangements. The final milepost is when death is imminent. At that point, it is appropriate to gather family, friends, and students and say the things that could only be said during the final moments. When one is going to immediately depart, to sing their song to the master of all, it is good to say, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echod. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Thank you.